Welcome back to The Big Picture. Once again, my guest is Tim Bowling, CEO of Compere, an international organization based right here in Buffalo that helps people facing mental health challenges. Typically on both sides, how long is somebody uh, connected with the program? Yes, on average, I would say about three, three and a half years, uh, people stay within the program. Um, and as I you know, shared earlier, the, the true success of the program is when it turns into just a natural friendship. It's no longer a match that Compere made. All we did was, was, all we were was the spark. You know, we got things started, we connected the two of you. And we've got some folks that have been in the program 15, 20 years. Hmm. And so that, that, that thing, and they don't need us anymore, but they stay within the program for the activities. Um, and that just has turned into a lifelong friendship as it should be. And it's okay. just really great. We had, we had somebody the other day uh, who was matched in the program had called, um, it was the client had called the volunteer and said, how are you doing? So it, it was reverse uh, uh, mentoring <laughs> and, and work. And she was saying, well, why are you calling me and asking me that? She goes, well, I know you're used to being out and about doing all your work and now you have to stay at home. I'm just calling in and checking in on you. But, I mean, that's just awesome. And so now it's, it's, it's no longer a client match relationship. It's a friend to friend relationship. And that's what the ultimate success of the program is. Well, it almost seems like you guys are, are playing the role of matchmaker to begin with, just to start at, right out of the gate. What's your uh, involvement once you initially uh, pair people up to be friends? Uh, as it goes through the relationship, do you look in on it? How do you interact? What's your yeah, role? Yeah, we do. Uh, so uh, uh, the volunteers are all required to fill out a monthly report. Uh, and that tells us the activities that they've been doing that month. Our staff review their monthly reports when they come in and it says on the monthly report, do you want a phone call? Are you struggling with anything? Can we help you with anything? So we monitor it very closely, especially for the first few months. Uh, once it kind of hits the groove and they're doing really well, they need us less and less. Uh, so we try to be very proactive in reaching out and, and, and checking in and how are things going. Uh, we have a volunteer advisory committee, uh, so they give us a lot of great advice on, on how to work with our volunteers. Uh, we have a number of layers of support. We do advanced training for our volunteers. So when somebody signs up to be a volunteer in a program, they go through a three-hour training. Uh, but then we offer advanced training based upon what we have heard from the volunteers of areas that they want advanced training on. So we provide a continuum uh, level of support to them. And if anybody needs additional support or help, we're always, got, I, I walk into the other room and I'll always hear our, our program staff on the phone with, with one of our clients or a volunteer is trying to help them uh, work through some snags that they may be having within the relationship, so. Okay, um, the, um, the, the change that you've undergone in the last month or so, have you had any typical comments from either side, the volunteers or, or the, the, the challenged people? Um, the, the change that's involved has it affected them in any particular way on, on average, or is it really just uh, case by case? Yeah, well, you know, the change that has taken place in the community has been the same change for everyone, but how it affects people really depends on where they're at in their life. So the change that's taken place in the community is a change of social isolation. You know, no one's really leaving their houses unless really they really need to. So the change is the same that everybody's experiencing, but depending on where you are and the gamut of your mental health challenges is how it's affecting you. Um, so we've heard varying different stories. Some folks are really, really, really struggling and other folks are doing better than other folks are doing. So it's really on a case by case basis. I tell people, you know, if you had a mental health challenge going into this, it's only gonna get as exasperated if you don't, you know, get outside and do some exercise, sleep well, eat healthy, you know, do the things, get a routine going. But if you didn't have a mental health challenge, and I feel like I know a lot of strong people in my life before all this, who are now reaching out to me saying, oh my gosh, and they're not part of the program. They're just good friends of mine. Uh, I'm really struggling here. What do you suggest I should be doing? And I always tell them what I tell myself, which are the big five, you know, and the big five for them is, you know, get outside and exercise, get good sleep, eat healthy. Uh, you want to definitely connect with, with folks and turn off that, turn off that news. <laughs> Don't fill your mind with a bunch of negative information. Having a routine is absolutely crucial right now for folks who are uh, struggling with their mental health challenge and for folks who aren't diagnosed. I think, we, you know, I thought everybody has a mental health challenge. Some are diagnosed and some are not diagnosed. 
And if it hasn't shown up now, it's probably showing, hasn't shown up before, it's probably showing up now. Now, we're almost out of time. I just have like a couple more questions. Uh, first of all, how do you restart once this is over? Is there, are you going to jump right back into things as usual or are you going to have to transition? Yeah, I feel like you've been a part of some of our staff meetings. So yeah, that's <laughs> been a big conversation we're starting to have. So we know we're at a minimum in, you know, in this uh, quarantine lockdown piece till mid-May. Uh, and uh, some of our leadership staff have, have started having that conversation. Uh, and there's some best practices around that that we're looking to learn from uh, about the next 100 days of how you ease yourself back into that. It'll be interesting, you know, we, we obviously have to abide by the laws of, of how many people can be in the office and masks and, and things of that sort. Uh, but within that, you also have individuals that are on your team. Some are more comfortable coming in than, than others. And it's just, it is what it is. You have to be very flexible and adjust to the needs of your team and, and of your staff. So we have had uh, some discussions around that and we're looking to put together a full plan here in the next week or two, present it out to our team and look at when we are allowed to all come in. I'm the only one that comes into the office every day. Um, I do it mostly to get out of the, get out of my house and to break up my routine. Um, so it, it's good for me to come in to do the work that needs to get done. But for me personally, it's good for my own mental health uh, in order to do that. So I come in every day to do that. Um, so we're looking at, you know, we're working on a plan and looking to implement that. Well, you've, uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, some of the events that, that were, had to be canceled because of this. And locally here in Western New York, you sponsor several activities normally. Uh, tell us about some of the activities that you, if this hadn't happened, you had scheduled and you're going to get back into once things get back to normal, right here in Western New York. Sure, so our school-based program over at Lackawanna Schools, obviously that has stopped one-to-one, -one, but our staff still connects with the students, <clears throat> just like we're connecting right now. So it's still continuing, it's just continuing differently uh, at this time, uh, which again has been a huge, we've got a lot of benefits out of that. We're, we're learning a lot more about the students than we would have never known than we ever knew before. So there's been a lot of benefits that's come from that. We're supposed to be going into to, uh, another school district here in September. We'll see what's going to happen uh, with that. Our mental health first aid program, which is all about face-to-face, -face, 30 people in a room, that has come to a, a full stop of over delivering the service that way. So what we did in the meantime is create a training online that folks can who have already been through our program that can come back in for a refresher course. So we've trained over 4,000 people over about the last six years in mental health first aid. So we're continuing to provide it. We're just providing it remotely, but not the full program. But we've all those trainings and those who are at school districts, colleges, businesses have all had to come to a halt. Uh, and then we talked about the face-to-face the -face piece um, and how we're doing that differently and pivoting on a lot. So in a big picture, we're still providing all of our services. We're just providing it differently right now. Um, and we're learning a lot. You know, um, I tell the team and we tell the staff, don't look at just the negative side of this and what's happening, but what are we learning? What can we apply to that we're going to go that's going forward? And how can we be innovative going forward and take us some of the things that we learned and come up with some new programming that's relevant and meeting the needs of our clients as well? So it, it doesn't all have to be doomsday. Um, you know, attitude is crucial to life. You know, I always, I always heard that, you know, attitude is 95% of what uh, happens to you and 5% of how you, you know, 95% of how you, you deal with them, 5% of what happens to you. And so having the right attitude at these, at these times are absolutely crucial. So we're looking at opportunities and, and trying to stay positive with all that. Well, and, and one of the, uh, the, the plus sides, I guess, is that people have more hands, have more time on their hands and they're you know, watching TV more, so they may be watching this program. How can they reach out to you? What can people do to help? Um, and on both sides, actually, I mean, how can they seek out your help for their friends and relatives. Uh, I, I know you said you go through doctors and referrals and how can volunteers contact you to be part of the program? Yeah, we think the, the fastest and easiest way for people to contact us at this time is to go to our website, which is compurebuffalo.org. You go to the website right there on the main screen as our phone buddy program. There's an inquiry form that they can fill out within, within a couple minutes, it comes over to us and they'll get a call within a couple of days to start that process. So that's the fastest and easiest way for volunteers to do that. For individuals that may be uh, watching the program, 
and they're struggling with their mental health component, that's also a great way to, to, to reach out to us is through, through the internet. So through our website as well, compurebuffalo.org. Uh, they, you know, all of our information is up there. They can, our contact information is all up there as well. It's just an easy way right now because with the whole phone thing, you know, people leaving messages on people's phones, they may get delayed. Uh, but if they go to the website and they contact us through there, it gets right to people's email boxes and they can, they're checking them daily, hourly, many times at that time. So that's the best way if somebody's looking for help and, and support. And there's other ways to contact, contact us there also on the website. Okay, terrific. Uh, Tim Bowling, CEO of Compure, um, a, a Western New York success story, serving people not just in Western, Western New York, but around the world. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, folks. I want to thank Tim for being my guest on this big picture. Um, we wish you, Tim, all the best in the future. It's a great service that you do. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching the big picture, and thank you for watching WBBZ, your hometown TV station. And we'll see you next time on the big picture.